Oh my goodness, you guys. It's cold. It's, it hasn't been cold here in Georgia. It's in the 30s. We had some really, really strong storms, really intense rain and wind, thunder and lightning come through yesterday. So I'm really curious to check on the drainage system in the garden to see how it handled all that rain. We have huge, huge sadness in our hearts for the people affected by the tornadoes in Alabama and Georgia. It's a uh, it's really difficult when something like this happens and so many people are affected. So prayers go out to them. Looks like everything's flowing, so I bet there's not any clogs at the end. I'm gonna go in and take care of the goats before I come out here and check on this further. But you can see daffodils are blooming. We planted some daffodil bulbs in our um, fruit bed to help protect them from the moles. Planting daffodil bulbs around your fruit trees helps prevent the moles from digging to eat your roots because they do not want to eat daffodils. We've got so many seeds up. I'm very excited. Looks like the celery is all germinating. There's the tiny ones down there. You see, baby celery. And then we've got lots of other brisecchias coming up, some lamb's quarters, and uh, some of them are stretching a little. What I'm doing here is I don't have enough light, so I'm moving it from this end to this end several times a day so that they won't stretch. So I just pulled this one forward and you can see, here, let me see. If you can see there how much they were leaning. You see how they were leaning towards the light? So they'll be able to straighten back up now so that they won't continue extending themselves. And then look at all these things that have germinated, guys. Our roselle, our safflower, the dill is coming up, the thyme, the lemon basil. That lemon basil is from my friend Kaylee at the farm at Quail Hollow. She traded those at the seed swap at the Homestead of America's conference. Looking forward to that again this year. It should be even better. And then, uh, and then some calendula here and on the end is doing well germinating, but it's definitely stretching trying to get to the light. <laughs> and, it, and it's getting light. It's just... You notice these are stretching the most. There's a slight difference between this light and this light. So this light is specifically made for plants and this one is not. And you see it works fine for keeping the plants healthy, but they do prefer the full spectrum light. We've got our brassicas that we are hardening off inside today because the temperatures are dropping into the 30s and we haven't had that kind of even close to those temperatures so we're gonna leave them in here to protect them a little bit so that they don't get too much cold before they're ready for it we've got a little bit of germination here and there in some of the exotic fruits from Baker Creek as well as the peppers are starting to germinate um, not a whole lot we still have quite a bit that needs to get moving and then we've got some onions germinating great we've got some look at this little guy he's just got a little soil hat on his head <laughs> so those are our artichokes those are coming up great um and still nothing on the eggplants so hopefully they're getting enough heat they're on the heat mat so hopefully they will begin germinating soon but everything else is doing really well here is acting really friendly I haven't gone in and checked her ligaments yet I'm gonna wait till I put her up on the stand and I'm gonna show you guys how to check ligaments on a goat she is three days away from her due date so she could go today or any day now so we'll see truly are you ready for some new sisters hopefully all girls huh 
Are you ready? Truly was her baby last spring. <laughs> They're sweet. Autumn is doing exceptionally well. I was actually pretty nervous about the cold weather and her not being used to it because she's been in the house all winter. But this past couple of weeks of her being out here has helped condition her to the outside temperatures very well. She's not even shivering. And previously when she was just an indoor goat, she would shiver at these low temperatures very quickly and she's not shivering at all. So glad we have these amazing Premier One heat lamps to keep her safe. We've got it tied in two different ways to make sure that it won't come undone. But I'm so confident with those lights that even if it came undone, the protective shield and the way the light is set up into the, the um, exterior shell makes it so that it would not... Look at her go. Wow, girl, you, you're, push, you're pushing up really well. So we are actually working on um, expanding her wheelchair. She's at a new stage of growth. So we're going to be making some adjustments to her wheelchair so that she can um, get around even easier during her physical therapy time. We've had quite a few new people join our channel that aren't as familiar with Autumn's situation. So I would highly recommend you go back and watch her special goat wheelchair build where I talk about her condition um, in detail. But I'm just going to say briefly here. Selenium deficiency causes white muscle disease. White muscle disease makes it so they can't walk. Not walking causes muscle atrophy. Muscle atrophy is very difficult to gain the conditions back so that the muscles are working again. So she's out of the selenium deficiency. She's out of the white muscle disease, but we're working on the atrophy now. So it's a lot of time that we spend with physical therapy with her. And I will say this. This is not your normal case of selenium deficiency and white muscle disease. Typically, if a goat goes through these conditions to the point where they can't walk, most farmers choose to euthanize them day one and don't go this route. So it's not something you're gonna see very often. It's not something that you are gonna hear a lot about. And it's not that common for it to be this severe. It's very uncommon. She's probably not all the way developed when she was born, is my speculation. So basically she's like a premature, which means she can catch up, but she is going to take a lot more tender care and love to get caught up if she ever does there is a possibility that she may not regain the ability to walk at that point we are going to have to make a difficult decision and i don't know how we can do that i honestly don't have a clue and i don't even want to think about it so um please know that i'm doing everything i can and we have consulted with numerous vets and experts on this situation and basically we're doing everything we can as it is and that's all we can do. The only other option is euthanize or to find her a home that she could just be a pet goat that somebody takes care of on a daily basis as a very spoiled baby goat that's going to get bigger and bigger. So, so if it were to be a situation like that, it would have to be somebody that was very qualified to take care of her. We would not just let her go to anybody, but that is a possibility for consideration in the future. Um, just not yet. I'm, I'm not, she's a part of our family and it's been really, really hard to work with her. It's been a lot of work. It's not easy. I'm not gonna pretend that it is but I'm hoping that it's gonna be worth it in the end. So keep praying for her and we will keep doing our best. Oh, kitty. All right, who wants to guess? When is she gonna go? Her due date's March 7th. Her last kidding, she had two babies. How many do you think she's having? I think two. I think two is a good guess. And I think she's probably going to go the date she is due. So what do you guys think? She's been showing some signs of discomfort 
for a couple of weeks now, so I'm thinking she's probably going to make it to her due date. She's not got any quick signs that are showing me anything differently. Her udder's been full for a couple of weeks, but it's not tight full. Her teats are not firm yet. They're still very relaxed. So I think... I think she's I think she's gonna make it to her due date. So I want you to guess down in the comments How many kids is she gonna have and what date is she gonna kid on? One of our Texas A&M quail is in quarantine, but doing really great and fantastic um, Somehow the other quail decided it was a good idea to try to take the feathers off of the back of its head I don't know if it's a boy or girl, but it's healing really well we did spray it with blue coat just to help with the healing and to prevent anything from being attracted to it. But we did isolate it as soon as we discovered the situation and it's eating and drinking and just doing fine. We're just gonna wait till it heals better and uh, before we put it back in with the others. These Myshire farm quail are so beautiful. I don't even know what kind I ended up with. I'm just, I, I really like this light colored one with the dark markings on its head. It's just really pretty. I like it a lot. They still haven't started laying eggs in this one though. So I guess when you're going for more color in the feathers, you get less eggs. So that's okay too. We'll see. Maybe come springtime when it starts warming up again, they'll start laying and We'll all be excited and there'll be beautiful blue eggs. That would be cool. I know my Shire has a lot of blue eggs in their genetics, so it'll be interesting to see what we get. I think it would probably be wise for me to throw a frost fabric over these. The temperatures are going to be getting down pretty low, and these plants think that it's spring because of the warm temperatures. So we don't want to lose any baby figs. Goodness, these trenches are just flowing with water. So they are working just wonderfully. It's just so unfortunate and disturbing that we've had this much rain. We really, really have never, ever, ever had this much rain in the 17 years I've lived in Georgia. It's never been this bad. You can see it's just been flowing steady out to the pond, nonstop. The garlic sure is rebounding now that we have it protected from whatever was eating it. It's uh, had a chance to regrow and some of those stalks are looking pretty thick. For this early in the season we won't be harvesting this till probably july the chickweed is just taken off <laughs> not something i plant but it's something i appreciate in my garden regardless it is a wild edible medicinal weed and it acts as a ground cover for my winter gardens and i'm okay with that you see these beautiful daffodils this dock i cannot get rid of Dock is definitely considered a medicinal, um, but it, it's not one that I'm wanting in here. Yeah, you can't pull dock up by the root. The root is a very, very strong tap root. So I'm gonna have to wait until I can get in here with a trowel. Whoa. <laughs> when the mud tries to trip you. We've got itty bitty radishes. They're growing really slow because it's not exactly warm and sunny out lately, so that's okay. It's a good thing to have in the ground, growing a little bit as the season progresses. It's getting full of weeds, but they are winter annual weeds, so that's one of the reasons why I'm not stressing it, because they will be gone when it warms up. I've got to get this spread out so that we can have a another section to plant here I already spread out the one that was on the asparagus bed so that it, the asparagus wouldn't be affected it looks like I kind of have to flatten out this one from the sugarcane bed and then this one's 
gonna be. So these are the beds we'll be planting first. It's this bed and this bed. A lot of people have asked me, what is my garden plan? Like, do I draw it all out? And nope, I don't. I used to, but what I typically do now is draw it out as I plant because I never know which seedlings and which baby plants are ready first until they're ready. So, and if I need to seed something before my seedlings are ready, then I'll use this space. Whatever space is closest to me, whatever space is ready is what I use first. So as time goes on, th these beds here will be filled with spring stuff more than likely. And then as time goes on, our summer stuff will be planted out this way once we get those beds formed into hills. So hilling is basically a method of raised bed gardens. You just don't have the wood to support it. It works almost the same, but the walls can kind of cave in and lose direction at times, and that can be frustrating. So in a perfect world, I would have wood holding these beds together, preferably cedar, so that it would last a lifetime. All right, I got the babies covered. And the sun's coming out and it's starting to feel a lot better out here. So I think the goats are gonna enjoy their day. Despite a little bit colder wind in the air, it's gonna be nice for them to get the fresh air. They were trapped in all day yesterday with the rain. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots. I just came over here to make sure that the fence was on and I hear Kitty making noise and standing off by herself. So we'll be on the lookout for Kitty Watch.